This is a King James Moment, brought to you by Lighthouse Baptist Church. Back when I was in kindergarten, Mrs. White taught me something very important that I've never forgotten. Things that are opposite are not the same. She taught us that uh, when something is completely different from something else, they're opposites and clearly not the same. Many of these Bible versions and their authors and translators claim that what they're saying in the, is exactly the same as in the King James Bible, but they're just using new words and, and uh, updated phraseology. Well, let's see if that's really true. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of several verses between the King James Bible and the New American Standard. In Genesis chapter number 27 and verse number 39, Isaac is speaking to his son Esau. And in the King James Bible, it says, And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. The New American Standard, however, says, Then Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold, away from the fertility of the earth shall be your dwelling, and away from the dew of heaven from above. So which is it? His earth will be the dwelling of the fatness and of the dew of heaven, or away from those things? In the book of Psalms, in Psalm number 10, in verse number 5, the Bible is speaking of the wicked, of the wicked. And the King James Bible says, speaking of the wicked, his ways are always grievous. Speaking of the wicked, his ways are always grievous. I'm not sure why, but in the New American Standard, it says his ways are prosper at all times. His ways prosper at all times. Your judgments are on high out of his sight. But I just wonder why the authors of the New American Standard Version of the Bible would want you to think that being wicked would be a good thing and a prosperous thing. In the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom, the Bible says in Proverbs 25 and verse 23, the north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance, a backbiting tongue. So it says the north wind driveth away rain. Yet in the New American Standard, the Bible says, uh, the New American Standard, not the Bible, but the New American Standard says, the north wind North wind brings forth rain and a backbiting tongue and angry countenance. So does the north wind drive away rain or does it bring forth rain? Another great example of not only not saying the same thing, but in fact saying the opposite is in Isaiah chapter number nine, where verse three begins, thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased their joy. And yet in the New American Standard Version, it says, Ye shall multiply the nation, ye shall increase their gladness. So they use gladness instead of joy, but they say that uh, we shall increase their gladness instead of not increase. Is it increase or not increase? One of the most glaring examples of opposites in the Bible translation is found in Hosea chapter number 11 and verse number 12. The King James Bible says, Ephraim compasseth me about with lies and the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah yet ruleth with God and is faithful with the saints. A very good thing. Then look at the New American Standard Version. Ephraim surrounds me with lies and the house of Israel with deceit. Judah is also unruly against God, even against the Holy One who is faithful. So which is it? Uh, are we, is, is the house of Judah ruling with God and faithful or unruly and against? Another example is in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, looking at verse number 16, the Bible says, but if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. No such custom. But look at verse number 16 in uh, 1 Corinthians 11 in the New American Standard Version. But if one is inclined to be contentious, we have no other practice. No such, which means none at all. And, the other, and then the New American Standard says no other practice. Meaning it's the only practice we have. And the King James says we don't have such a practice. Opposites. Colossians chapter number 2 and verse number 18 in the Bible 
says, Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. In the New American Standard, it says, Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement and the worship of angels, taking his stand on visions he has seen, inflated without cause by his fleshly mind. So the King James Bible says they've not seen visions, and then the New American Standard says they have seen visions. Maybe it was a, a vision of the Virgin Mary in a piece of toast. Maybe it was a ketchup stain on a laundromat floor opposite. The King James Bible says much about modesty. In 1 Peter chapter number 3, beginning of verse number 3, the Bible says, Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of uh, plating of hair and wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. New American Standard says your adorning must not be merely external, braiding of hair and wearing of gold and putting on of dresses, but let it be the, and it goes on to let it be the hidden person, but it says must not be merely external. See, our, there, there it promotes the braiding of hair and the wearing of jewelry and that outward appearance. And the King James Bible never tells us to emphasize the outward appearance. Those are just a few examples of opposites between the Bible and these New Age versions. I'm sure after 35 years, Mrs. White would be very excited to know that her lessons on opposites stuck with this kindergartner. I just wish the authors of some of these other false Bibles would have made it through Mrs. White's kindergarten class. Maybe they wouldn't have messed up trying to improve on perfection. And once again, this has been a King James Moment from Lighthouse Baptist Church.